Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to unbox and test out Siemens' new tablet IPC. It's an i5 tablet and the part number is MD34A and uh, this is a brand new HUD off the presses. So let's go ahead and take a look at the overhead cam here and we'll zoom in on the label to see what they sent us. It's not often you find a tablet that's a full uh, i5, you know, with all that horsepower. So in any case, um, they can get a good look at the label of the unit they sent us. And this is a full-blown industrial PC uh, in tablet format. So let's go ahead and unbox this guy. So I'm gonna push this handle down, and open up the package like that. Okay, and I'll probably have to put my glasses on for this. Okay, here we can see the unit. Okay, very small and light. You can see this particular unit. Let's get it out of the plastic. Okay, here, and we'll go ahead and take off the uh, protective cover from the display. Okay, now this particular unit, I believe, is 1920 by 1200, which is a little bit better than full HD. And we can look at the back here. We'll see that this particular unit does have both an RFID reader and a barcode reader. So we have the unit that has all the different features. You can see in here down at the bottom, let me... Well, let me turn it around so we can get some light on it. Still uh, redoing the studio here. So you can see there is a micro SD card slot there and also a SIM card. So this must have LTE built into it as well. We can see one thing that's missing though is the removable battery. This battery is said to last up to six hours. Um, so let's put this one side for a moment. Let's see what else is in here. All right, yeah, it looks like the battery. All right, we have the charger. Okay, standard charger. Okay. And we have the battery. Again, uh, from the documentation I read already, this should last about six hours. Okay. Put that one side too. You can, you can buy a separate charger and additional batteries if you're going to be using it all day. In here we have the wall plug. Now for my recent trips overseas, we I recently went on vacation to Ireland and I saw how important it was to have devices that were rated both uh, 120 and 240. And so I just want to check because they make adapters, very simple adapters that go from, you know, this plug style to the Irish plug style, but is the device rated for 120 and 240? Let's see if we can see that on there. Yeah, you can see that 120 to 240 and you can see there 50, 60 Hertz. So if you did need to use this, like in Ireland where I was recently on vacation, you could definitely just get an adapter for the plug and you'd be good to go. Okay, now before we go any further, let's take a look at the physical uh, buttons and features of the unit itself. Okay, so here we can see the front. We can see it has a forward-facing camera. Okay, and a couple of indicators. And then on the left, we have a vent. Okay, and then over here, some things are hard to see. What's in here? Okay, that's our gigabit ethernet port and our charging port. Okay, this looks like the on-off switch. Let's see what's in here. Okay, and here we have a headphone jack, a USB 3.0. We have a USB-C. Yeah, what's that last one? HDMI, so it's a mini HDMI. Excellent. Okay, we already saw the back with the RFID and the barcode reader. And of course, where the battery goes in, we also have a camera on here. Okay, we have a speaker. Okay. Already looked at the SIM and micro SD card slots. Here's the bottom. They actually make a desktop dock for this, which is nice. We asked for one so we could leave it set up here in the office and use it for in future demos. And now here we have two user-defined buttons. 
So they do have default settings, depending if you click or double click them. But at this point, I think what we'll do is we'll put the battery in, we'll uh, let it charge up, and then we'll uh, take a look at it. We'll boot it up for the first time. So I'll be right back. All right, just like with any new computer, when you first turn it on, you've got to go through a bunch of different settings, like creating your user account, adding Wi-Fi, and so on. So let me go ahead and speed up the video so we can get through that quickly. Okay, after I got Windows installed, I went ahead and installed TI Poto and Studio 5000. Those two packages take a long time to install. So I went ahead and did that and I didn't record those. And now I have everything installed on the tablet. So you can see here on the workbench, I have it tilted up so I can see it better. And also because of the scan lines you get with the camera versus the screen, I have, I brought my recorder out here to record the screen directly using that HDMI port. And so uh, I'm also using a USB-C to USB adapter for my wireless keyboard and mouse. I just really prefer to use a full-size keyboard and mouse than using a touchscreen when I can get away with it. And uh, so I bought that. Now you may say, hey, Sean, there's a full-size USB port on there, right? Well, there is, but when I went to uh, install my licenses, I was forced to unplug my keyboard and mouse. I'm like, that ain't good. So I just thought it would be nice to have this adapter here. So, so I'll leave that, uh, that built-in USB port free. Because I don't have anything to plug into the USB-C port right now anyways. So with that said, you can see on the unit here that I do have TIA Portal installed. And let's go ahead and try to connect to my S7-1500, which I have on and plugged into the network. Now I'm currently connected to my uh, studio network via Wi-Fi. So we should have no problems uh, connecting up to that unit. So let me get the TIA Portal started up. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and open the project. Let's see here. Open up. All right, let me switch over the project view. You can hear the fan kicking in there. Okay, great. So let's see if we can uh, go online. Now, even though the display itself is set to 1920 by 1200, I do have it set at the recommended 150% in the display settings. As a matter of fact, I'll show you that when we get back to the desktop here. We'll go to display settings. So that's why everything looks bigger. And you typically wouldn't have it set on this if you are using a desktop monitor. But because this is a, only a 10-inch screen, that recommended, I found that works out really well. Even though it gives you less room inside a TIA portal to look at your code. But you can see here I'm online. We can go ahead and open up. Now let's do the motor control. This is the uh, program we do in my course on the S7 over at theautomationschool.com. Just wait for it to open up. We'll go ahead and we're already in the run mode. So let's go ahead and monitor this guy. All right. And it's not connected up to the system, so I can't start and stop motors or anything. But you can see everything's on. You can see where successfully connected to the PLC. So that's good. So let's go ahead and close TIA Portal. Okay, so now we're done with TIA Portal. Let's go ahead and try Studio 5000. First, let me open up our Syncs Classic and see if I have the Ethan IP driver installed. And you can see I do. I'm going to double click on it, let it browse the network. Now I don't have everything on here in the office. What I'm looking for is my L1. Okay, you can see it right there. So let me go ahead and minimize that. And I will go to Studio 5000. For the sake of time, I've only installed version 24, which is what I'm using in my L1. So let me do a from upload. And I'll browse the network here, and I'm looking for the L1. And I'll do an upload. And here, because I didn't move my activation key over from my desktop, it's saying that I'm in this grace period here. So I'll go ahead and click on OK. Again, remember, I'm doing this wirelessly, so it won't be as fast as if I was connected to the uh, gigabit network here in the office. Okay, I'm going to select file. Okay, let me go ahead and maximize here. And we'll open up the lights routine, which I have blinking the lights. And everything looks good.
All right, so as far as TIA Portal and Studio 5000, they both run fine. My uh, wireless in here is a kind of an older access point, so it's not the fastest wireless network. But yeah, I think you get an idea how you can use this full-blown PC tablet, you know, if you needed to go out and check on PLC code while you're out there in the field. Now, again, this isn't going to be as fast as your desktop, right? But it's still an i5. And, uh, you know, it's not as easy to, you know, interface with either of these two packages with the touchscreen as it is when you have a full uh, keyboard and mouse, right? But in any case, one of the things I did also do here is I installed my two favorite automation games. I wanted to show you how they worked. So let me go ahead and close Studio 5000. And the first game I'm going to open up is Factorio. Now here you can see a very simple map I was working on. This is not my full factory, but everything seems to run great. No problems whatsoever. So I imagine you get a bigger factory, it would still run good. Now let's try the other game. Now I just loaded up the game and it's it's running well. Um, it's not running as good as it would if I had a full-blown video card, but I'm actually impressed that it's running so well here. Uh, frame rate a little choppy now and again, but again, um, for a product that's not designed to run video games, I would say this tablet's doing a pretty good job. I also wanted to try out the barcode reader, which you activate by using the bottom custom button. You can see it right there. So uh, when I press it, you get a light and you get the reader to go on. And uh, I just grabbed some random things around the office here. So let's try my badge from uh, MIA. Okay, wow, did that fast. Nice. I have this uh, serial the USB converter, which I'm going to be testing. Okay, and then I have this old S7-1500 CPU. So it all worked. I don't have any applications on the unit to actually use with it. But you can hear you get the affirmative scan when you actually do successfully scan the barcode. And it seems to work really well. And with that, that's going to wrap up my first look at Siemens' new IPC tablet, the MD34A. I got to tell you, I really like this unit. It may not be as powerful as a $2,000 desktop or a laptop you're using in your office. But as you saw in this first look, I was able to run TIA Portal without a problem. I was run, able to run Studio 5000 without a problem. I even ran a couple of video games. It's not a gaming rig. It doesn't have a high-end NVIDIA card in it. But still, it ran them pretty good. So with that said, there's so many other things you can do with this. Of course, it has. Uh, you can get it with the built-in RFID reader. You can get it with the built-in barcode reader. Um, you can get it with built-in 4G LTE uh, slot for a SIM. You know, you can expand the memory with an SD card, a micro SD card. It has gigabit Ethernet. It has a headphone jack, physical headphone jack, which is nice. You know, USB 3.0, USB-C, um, HDMI out, which came in helpful in this video. And um, just so many features. It has the custom buttons on the back here, uh, front and rear facing cameras, and, um, you know, a physical speaker on here so you can hear it and hear sounds and, you know, play audio and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it has so many different accessories for it. They have a desktop dock. They have a, a carrying handle so you can hold it in your hand and so on so uh, and i really love that you can take the batteries out and replace them that they're removable so you can have all this charged up ready to go so i would say you know this again is not going to replace you know your high-end i7 i9 desktop or laf laptop with a high-end nvidia rtx card in it but um man i think they did a great job for something that's light portable and has all kinds of features built into it that uh, you can take on the road with you or take out into the plant with you and uh, monitor. I mean, you could even run HMI screens on this or you can monitor your PLCs on it. I think they did a really good job. And uh, I really uh, want to just thank Siemens for sending it out to us and letting us take a look at it. And with that, if you did enjoy this episode, please give us a like, a sub, and a share. And until next time, my friends, peace.